Restaurant Unstoppable. Inspire, empower, and transform the industry. You're, I can I can tell you're chomping at the bit to talk about the evolution of a chef, and I, this is really important. A chef to chef to owner. You talked about recipes. You talked about seeing how the engine drives the train. What's the translation there? What do you mean by the engine drives the train? Well, um, for instance, the number uh, in in our statistical history that. Uh, I learned from Bo, the, the number that made the biggest impact was covers per open night. So um, one of the biggest things we did that was hugely successful, uh, typically in New Orleans, summertime is slow. There's not a lot of visitors. So it can be dreadfully slow in the summer. So one summer, um, I call Paul. I called him on the phone. I said, Jeff, you know, it's so slow, and, and we particularly can't get anybody to come early. He said, give him a free appetizer from 5.30 to 6.30. So we tried that, and it was working a little bit. And um, that led to an idea I had to do what became known as an early evening special. So from 5.30 to 6.30... Um, and this is, I don't want to date this too much, but it was three courses for twelve ninety five. What was it called? The early what? Special? Early evening special. Okay. So if you come to Brightson's from five thirty to six thirty, you can get a three course menu for twelve ninety five. So, you know, our check average at that time was probably twenty eight. Wow, that's huge. And over time. We'd have a full house on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, five thirty, six thirty. So, a lot of people would push back on this and say, "You, you can't give away too much." You That's can't exactly what chefs said. Okay, I can't sell my food for that money. I said, "Well, if you don't get people in the door, you're not going to be serving food at any price for very long." And that's the thing, because what what. What we realized was, um, I mean, you have to be cost conscious, of course, but it's what Bo called revenue contribution. Revenue contribution. What does that mean? That means instead of taking in ten thousand a week, you're taking in thirteen thousand a week. So that's thirty percent more cash in the bank than you had before. Wait, say that one more time. Revenue contribution. Yeah. So if your normal week is ten thousand dollars, yeah. But the early event special bumps it up to thirteen thousand. Okay. That's thirty percent more revenue. Total revenue. Yeah, total revenue. Yeah. Top of the line. But profit is different because you're not making the same margins. True. But there's a balance there. There's a uh, uh, and it's literally a balancing mm -hmm. act. I mean, we served a lot of chicken. <laughs> you know. It, it was, you have to be extremely cost conscious. You're not conscious. giving anything away. You're selecting which right. entrees you get. Yeah. I mean, maybe instead of running 32% food costs on that menu, maybe you're running 38 or 40. Yeah. But your staff's making tips. Mm -hmm. Cust what we realized was the intangible benefit. People walk in at 5.30, 5.45, and the place is bustling. Yeah, what's that look like from outside? People driving by, yeah. right? And they're like, man, so, I yeah. love this place. So I think what I've heard in perspectives on this is you're not look. that's not a loss. That's an investment. That's a marketing expense. Yes. You have to look at it as a marketing expense. And today, the evolution of that, I would say, is you're giving, you're not giving food away. You're trading it for contact information. Exactly. Because now we have all these tools and services to capture the data. Right. Good point. So you're saying, okay, I'm going to give you a discount, but in exchange, you're going to give me your email and your phone number when you make the reservation, and I'm going to segment you to a specific list and market to you to create a long-term relationship. Exactly. And That's exactly right. you got to look at it that way. You're building Oh, your and list. they'll come back on a Saturday night too. Yeah. And I mean, they'll buy wine and all that stuff too. And you can't let the discount be the draw. That I mean, it is the draw, but it – but. They're after the draw is the experience that they had. Exactly. That they had it. That's right? the seed you're planting. The best marketing is food in malls. Yes. Yeah. And from our perspective, the staff's perspective, 
um, it was extremely healthy because instead of standing around from 5.30 to 7 o'clock, an hour and a half, with no tickets, mm-hmm. we crank it up in the beginning. Yeah. So the kitchen's in the groove. The, the servers are making tips. You know, it just keeps the whole train yeah. moving. So the go full circle, you started this with saying covers, uh, covers per night is the metric. So you're getting a whole new round of, of seatings, a third round, or what, how many rounds typically, four? Exactly. Yeah. So that would be two full seatings instead of one. Got it. Got it. Um, you talked about recipes, and you realized that having to draft this recipe for this me- media outlet was the first time you actually cemented it and put it in writing. But, I mean, a recipe in itself is like the most basic system, right? It's a process. It's yes. a step-by-step process. I mean, businesses have recipes beyond the food. Like yes. here's here's the opening recipe. Here's the 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 closing recipe. I'm talking about like checklists, right? Yes. And that was the first checklist that you had to write. And you noticed from that first experience that by writing it down, what happened? It became a teaching tool. Mm-hmm. And the thing about it is, as painful as it seemed to me in the beginning, once you got it, you got it. Mm-hmm. You know, Chef Larry and I still make jokes. We break out a dish we haven't done in three years. Hey, this recipe still works. <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's gonna break. laughs> um, but, you know, it, it eventually, you know, I compiled a little repertoire of recipes. And um, now today, all, each one of my chefs has their own binder in the kitchen with a recipe for every dish they make. And the binders grow. The longer you're here, the bigger your binder gets. And so, you know, writing a recipe is, to me anyway, not something to be taken lightly. I mean, yes, there's measuring, there's timing, there's temperature. But the method, how can you describe everything you do in the most understandable way? Um, Good recipes work. uh, And they work consistently. And, and I get that comment a lot, and I think that's, you know, very gratifying. 